first of all, at how the status quo actively demeans women, how you don't get any signaling disbenefits that they try to prove, like telling women they're worth less or telling women they can only work in those zones, how that does happen very actively in the status quo. Secondly, I'm going to be looking at greater mainstream interaction, how it enables women to invest more in, more in, what, he, in what Michael terms mainstream economics, how it also combats his economic inefficiency. And then thirdly, I'm going to be looking at incumbent social development, how it leads to greater social agitation, so like class solidarity, and how it also has incumbent benefits, like increasing educational incentives, increasing incentives of the state to invest in that kind of stuff. Right from the start, then, in the first point, of how the status quo means women. Right from the start of Michael O'Dwyer's speech, sorry, I said that to Michael Clark. But right from the start, he said, like, such improvements, like in the EU and the US, and I'm sure in other places, like, like he limits in scope those benefits of things like anti-discrimination laws, like disproportionately in this motion. Like they cannot apply to all regions they talk about, but we will engage there first. Stephen did qualify it later. Michael says, you're less likely to see women in those regions getting promoted, or, or in those countries. Like women are actively oppressed Points. in his countries, or in the more developed countries that he does talk about. Look at tech companies in the US in the 90s. As they gained in value moving into the 21st century, promotion rates for women actually dropped since the, since the 1990s. As it increased in value, women were more excluded. It's not an improvement. It's Men maintain micro social dominance, no thank you, within those institutions and within those workplaces. There are undervalued classes that are suppressed within environments where they don't occupy leadership positions and where those dominant structures perpetuate themselves because the environment isn't owned by them. They talk about mitigating that with anti discrimination laws in the first opposition, in the first, uh, opposition speech. Like, not even in his few examples does that work, no thank you. Like, men in these companies have more capital stock. Men within those corporate structures have more abilities, have more networks to be able to get promoted, have people who they know better, perhaps better educational opportunities early on, or better schooling, have better promotional networks. Proposition constrain that betterment to that environment. They constrain it to active suppression where micro suppressions are more effective by men. Then they say, but you lack role models, no thank you. Like, even still, it's better because it's so empowering to see women go and get them like men, or women at the very least beating the boys. Like, that's demonstrated by non promotion, first of all. It's demonstrated by non promotion owing to sexist structures that we managed to avoid. When OG modeled this as women definitely occupying leadership positions, first of all, you avoid things like discrimination against maternity leave or discrimination against the fact that women can get pregnant. Like, far less likely, as OG say, to get that. Avoid hiring discrimination when more people are that category that is hurt, when more people are that category that might get pregnant and that might be forced in some instances or in poorer countries to have to take time off work. Like you lose that kind of microsuppression. Also things like, like men being more likely to tell women what to wear that feeds into sexual harassment structures that actively, that actively suppresses women. Obviously a harm in itself, but also massively harmful for their economic betterment and for their ability to prosper within that corporate structure. So then he says that no, this is still bad because it says women are less than by first of all saying they're less than the men because they need their own special place and also by saying that they can't compete with the men and that's just harmful. Like, but these are social spaces that in other ways constantly demean women. These are social spaces that tell women that they are less valuable by making them have, no thank you, less valuable or less lucrative promotion opportunities. It happens right now when we see women in virtually no border position. Stephen says, well, they would be otherwise competing. Like, in the status quo, girls lack an, 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 like, lack an explanation for that. Those young girls that he talks about lack an explanation for what is empirically a, a like, disastrous promotion rate, a disastrous rate of high leadership positions. So thank you, we're able to explain that. Like, they suffer as they lack social outlets, particularly in countries that, he, that they decide to engage with later on, like Saudi Arabia, where this policy has been enacted. It's empowering by giving a social outlet, by, getting, by making, making sure that, thank you, that there are like, female-dominated spaces with female in leadership positions. He says men say they're lesser, like men do that already, with hierarchical spaces that are forced to move to male-dominated environments. It's empowering and subversive to have women in leadership positions there, establishing women as customers, and yes, we're men can also be customers too, so we also avoid the signaling benefits there that they raise. Secondly, on greater like mainstream interaction, and how you actually increase involvement there before I get off that second point, I'm going to take Stephen. Okay, so the vast majority of women live outside these areas. We now tell those people that they can't get any job at all, but the only jobs they should be aspiring to are ones only for women in these particular zones. Why is it okay to do that to those individuals? Like, first of all, it wasn't actually strictly geographically constrained early on. It's necessary, even if it is. What do you have are people who are left behind. When they talk about people being left behind, look at the fact that working class women are more actively hurt in the status quo because working class jobs and jobs available to them are ones that more stress physicality, the very lowest tier jobs in most economies, stress physicality, stress menial labour, and women are more excluded by that when it fetishizes those things, no thank you, or when it stresses basic labour. We give working class women better opportunities there, women who would otherwise be completely left out. Like that leads to better opportunities to get on the ladder, it leads uh, to better opportunities to develop savings for greater mainstream interaction that they otherwise lose out on. It's harder for those women Huge. to invest. That leads 
things like greater unemployment with, uh, uh, amongst working class women, with women disproportionately occupying the, the poverty brackets of those countries. They are the side that leaves the most vulnerable behind. They are the side that leaves the poorest women behind. Those are women Boys. who would not get any work on the comparative. Those are women who are excluded from like the mainstream zone in the comparative anyway, so we don't see how they win on that. Then when they talk about like opening opposition talk about there's less need to engage elsewhere, or it's a more hostile mainstream to women when there are fewer women Question. there. Again, that's not clear. They're excluded right now from business startups and things like that, owing to a lack of relative startup capital, given that men disproportionately own capital or are just richer, but also better opportunities to transfer to the mainstream. Things like developing business and leadership acumen that we have proved they're less likely to get a chance to develop those kind of leadership skills in the mainstream, also developing contracts, yeah. developing contacts, yeah. developing, no thank you, boosting their CV. Like what happens to those women left behind? Those are the majority of women, no thank you, who get less opportunities to fill their CV, who get less opportunities to occupy those leadership roles. Then thirdly, on social development. They say there's less pay on our side's jobs because probably. Like in Saudi Arabia, no thank you, this is empirically untrue. Women in, in special economic zones okay, uh, earn above the median wage. Like why? Because when they, took, when they like discuss things like affirmative action, that's politically unpalatable. It was the reason for, um, for special economic zones as opposed to affirmative action being enacted in Saudi Arabia. It's unpalatable owing to things like segregated gender politics. Affirmative action is massively unpalatable for those things. But also, when you do get men as customers in the special economic zones that side proposition brings you, you do avoid the disbenefits or the signaling disbenefits they talk of, of men and women being separated or men viewing women as lesser in that sense. Then when Stephen says on a practical challenge, like, oh, there's still oppressive areas, they still, like, men are still able to control, for instance, accounts, are still able to control financial structures. Again, look at things like educational development. There's an incentive in countries of low female employment, or a lack of incentive in countries of low, of low female employment, to invest in education for women. That's because women are not viewed as capital actors, women are not viewed as things that reward the state, you make an incentive for the state to trust them as profit making and to see them as profit making and to invest in their education early on. Currently those incentives don't exist, currently they're massively devalued when they're viewed only as free domestic labour and there's no incentive to better them. That's not, as Michael termed, economically efficient, we win on that as well. We get educational prospects, we increase personal wealth so they can move elsewhere, we also make more political demands for more freedoms, they were at the forefront of political agitation recently in Saudi Arabia, we increase their economic role, but not to make social space, but also class solidarity. We're so proud of those.